in his more than 20 years of teaching at Schoolcraft Elementary School in southwestern Michigan. Al Johansson never had to handle a serious emergency. But on January 8, 1993, while working playground duty during recess for the first, second, and third graders, he suddenly found himself with the life of a child in his hands. Rob was out playing ball with a couple kids, and Eloise was out walking around. Nothing out of the ordinary seemed to be occurring. You know, it was just uh, a nice walk around the playground, keeping an eye on everybody. Brian Tenbrick was in the second grade. Kids are putting snow on the slide so it go faster. Feels like you're like someone throwing you off a cliff or something. It's really fast. Drew Croft was in Mrs. Peter's first grade class. I knew Lance since kindergarten and we were really good friends. We like to play sports and get in trouble sometimes. Caitlin Robertson was in the other first grade class. I think Lance is a really nice boy. I, I think he's sort of cute. But I don't know if Lance has a secret crush on me. Teachers make us go one by one, so nobody gets hurt. It was Lance's turn to go. The next time I saw him, I thought he died. All of a sudden he stopped in a fast jerk. And he was trying to pull himself up, but he couldn't. He looked scared. I mean, like he saw a ghost. Brian comes up and says somebody's stuck on the slide. When I first looked over, I see somebody flopping. To me, it looked like a fish flopping out of the water. Oh, my gosh. And then all of a sudden, he's not struggling anymore. He was dead still. You okay? He you was okay? right in that one spot on the slide that I couldn't get to him from the top and I couldn't get to him from the bottom. And I knew if I grabbed the string and tried to pull him up, right? I'd just choke him. Why don't you guys go get some help? Come on, buddy. It's okay. I wedged myself under his legs and pushed him up as much as I could because my one thought basically was release the pressure on the string. Teacher Rob Kaufman had been supervising kids on the other side of the playground. Al, what is it? He just yelled at me to get a knife, get a knife. No, no, why not do this thing? He's choking. And all I could see was a very taut string caught on something at the top. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, it's, it's stuck. The string was really wedged down in there very tight. A little more. He's choking, man. I was pulling on it with everything that I had, and I couldn't get it loose. Hold on, push him up, push him up. I'm trying. The string was tight around his neck, and there was no response. The thought that he was in deep trouble was on my mind. Is he all right? Principal Nancy Hass rushed out to try to help. Al and I had to use both of our hands to get the string and the mask off because it was quite tight around his neck. Lance. He was bluish gray and he did not appear to be conscious. I figured that, you know, he had been strangled. Lance. He never moved one bit and I thought he was dead for sure. Come on, Lance. I was almost scared out of my wits. I'm not feeling a pulse. Come on, Lance. We were having difficulty getting a pulse. He's not breathing now. At that point, he looked as close to death as anybody I've ever seen. It was scary because i never seen a friend get hurt so bad before. I was afraid I might lose a good friend. I was scared, and I was glad Nancy was there. She breathed into him. Yeah, buddy, that's it. And he didn't respond. 
And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and just our eyes said, do it again. I did one more puff, then he took this giant gasp of air. Yeah. Yes. Here's a blanket. Yeah, okay, okay. Here's a blanket. Okay, come on, kids. Come on. Everybody line up. Let's go. We were asking him questions like, do you know who we are? Can you move your toes? And he seemed to be able to do all of that. We were quite relieved, and I don't think it really hit any of us how serious it was until after. It's okay. Oh, it's okay, sweetie. It's gonna be okay. He came up and told us that Lance started breathing again. He wasn't dead. I was so relieved. Neil Robertson was also friends with Lance. And I wouldn't want that to happen to any other kids because um, uh, everyone deserves to have a life in this world. Schoolcraft Fire Chief and EMT Tracy McMillan arrived within 10 minutes. Hi, I'm with the rescue. Okay. When I did get to the child, instantly he kind of smiled at me and I had a real good feeling at that time that this was going to turn out well. Anyone that deals with the public, deals with the children, should be trained in the art of CPR. It was quite a scary thought that had the teachers not taken the initiative to start the rescue breathing, we could have had a totally different situation and Lance might not be with us today. Seven-year-old Lance Roberts and his parents are thankful he escaped without any permanent injury. I asked my mom to cut the strings off my clothes because I didn't want to get caught again. I knew that the string with a little bead on the end it could be that dangerous. Go ahead. Everybody thought that Lance's accident was a freak accident, but the beads can get caught on just about anything, and that's going to cause the string to pull tight. I want everybody to know how thankful I am for saving my life. I can't even imagine what my life would be without Lance. I had lost a child previously, and then almost losing Lance, I would have been devastated. I'm really glad that I can still play with my brother and my sister. I hope that it doesn't happen to anybody else. And I feel lucky that I didn't die. Next. Yeah, honey. No. I had told her no. Wait until I'm done with dishes, and then I'll give you both a bath, and then get you in your pajamas. 